Hello and welcome back to our blog. It's the second part of the RTI uh, re respiration tract infections we're talking about. And uh, we had it inspired, this, this topic was inspired by Kaz and Colin who are both experiencing issues at the moment. And because I don't have a lot of experience, I sent out a, a message to one of um, somebody I thought would be quite helpful and they came back and gave me an answer to the RI. Well, not an answer, but gave me some background to the RI because I don't know a lot, a lot about it. And I wanted to just read that to you, but the first thing is that all I'd say is make sure you take full qualified advice from a qualified vet, first of all. That's the first thing. So what we're going to discuss is people's feelings and thoughts. So don't take it as gospel, but maybe take the elements that you think would be helpful to your problem solving. Okay? If we can just put that out there to start with. So RI is a bacterial infection and is usually a sign of a compromise in the immune system due to stress from external factors. So I would agree with that. Um, I think RI can also be viral, meaning it can be virus-based as well as bacterial. And I think we need to differentiate between the two. A viral infection that causes RI issues is much more dangerous than a bacterial issue. But both of them are actually um, very similar. And I think today we're not going to go into the viral side, we're going to go into the bacterial side. And therefore, this particular message I think is very, very relevant. So it says here that the bacterial infection is usually a sign of compromised immune system due to stress from external factors. So when I read that, I thought to myself, my goal must be to de-stress my animals. And hence, that inspired me to make an adjustment on my animals, Jared, on our animals. Because if I notice any stressful behavior, I've got to eliminate that as soon as I can. Because otherwise we can end up with issues. I believe that these bacteria are actually present all the time in even healthy snakes, but their immune system protects them. Interesting, I never realized that. If they get too stressed through incorrect husbandry, which kind of jogged my uh, mind, they go down with RI. Treatment is via antibiotic injection in severe cases. In milder cases, you can raise the temps, particularly ambient for the cool side, increase humidity and put the snake on paper dampened with an antibacterial like F10. So here's the F10. Yeah. Now if you go on to some of the videos, I've been watching, I think I've been watching loads of videos actually. <laughs> Getting different views and opinions. It's all part and parcel of this. Now if you get this, read the instructions on the back because it is a chemical disinfectant and it is friendly to reptiles as long as you apply the dilution on here. If you don't apply the dilution, what I like about this is it's got these two little squeezy things here. Look, you can squeeze that. Yes, it opens the lid. Oh, there you don't. I've done it before without the lid. Look. Uh -huh. See? Um, and it's got 10 mil on that side, isn't it? And you just measure off. I wish it had 10 breakdown of the mil, Jared. It's got 5 and 10. You've got to guess it. So it's a bit of rule of thumb. But when we do our water sprays and when we're kind of disinfecting, we use those chambers, don't we, Jared? Mm -hmm. And then we then pour that into there. But um, So it's important to have a measure of how you can get one mil out of there because whatever you're doing, whether you're treating your rubs for cleaning or whether you're using a, a fogger for RI, whatever you're deciding to use, you've got to make sure you get the mix right. So very important to look at the back of the instructions and read it before you apply. So coming back to this message, it says, Treatment is via antibiotic injections in severe cases. In milder cases, raise the temps, particularly the ambient for the cool side, increase humidity and put the snake on paper, dampened with an antibactericide like F10 or even antiseptic like Dettol. So there we go. We've even got a Dettol coming in here. So we had another person last week talk about Dettol. I think it was Kaz, actually. She was saying that she uses diluted um, Dettol and I've never used it. So this expert professional, well, professional is saying that um, they use something like uh, diluted, very, it says very dilute here, it says light dental, very diluted. The other thing is that on the temperatures, some guys are saying that you lift the temperatures and others are saying you reduce the temperatures and it depends on the type of snake you've got and it depends on the environment. So I think there's different adjustments according to the needs of the snake because I've been watching other videos, because there's so little videos on ball python RI. I have to go into looking at boas and constrictors and there's a guy in Australia that gave a really good one and he was saying that 
you know, it can be up and down depending on the species as well. So don't apply this to all your other snakes because it may only be relevant to ball pythons and the other snakes might need a different treatment. So please, I'm, I'm gonna throw that in as well, just to make sure no one applies principles to other snakes. Obviously take vet advice, everything must be done through a vet. Now let's just move on and see. Let the animal breathe the fumes, but do not drink or ingest any of the liquid. You can also use a nebulizer which is often called a fogger. You get these reptile foggers, and they're on. Um, we did a, we built our own, didn't we, Jad? We didn't buy one that was provided by a reptile. We bought a nebulizer so that we could treat the one that we received in yeah. quarantine. Yeah. So, and then we'll bring that out on one of our videos and show you our setup. But a nebulizer is useful because it's like a vaporizer. And what it does, it takes the F10 in the right solution and it creates mist in this rub and then you put your snake in there and the snake for 20 minutes is breathing in disinfected water through the mist at the level it's not going to kill it. And what that does, now because did you know that snakes can hold their breath for a long time, Joe? Mm -hmm. How long do you reckon? I don't know that times, but... The reason why we, they recommend 20 minutes and put your rub, if you're going to do it in a rub system, make sure that rub's on a heat mat because if you don't put it on a heat mat, it'll get cold. Or in a warm ambient room. Or a warm ambient setup, yeah. Make sure that there's a warm spot on that because Remember, you've got to keep the temperatures up for the animal as well. You don't want them getting cold. Yeah, we're going to talk about causes and what causes are. Right, and we're going. I know this 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 particular message is probably going fast for us, and I'm going to break it down and go back to cause, symptoms, and remedies. But I think this gives us a feel and flavour for one person's experience and what they're doing, and then we can talk about the detail. So he says, actually, he said you should be doing that for uh, in the tub for 20 minutes. Now, if a snake can hold its breath for, say, five minutes, which it probably can, maybe longer, if you only put it in for five minutes and it holds its breath, it's got nothing going into its internal tract, okay? So therefore, you get no disinfectant going down there to kill the germs, the bacterial germs. So you think you've given it treatment, and if it isn't in there long enough, you haven't. <laughs> he's come out of there and he's held his breath. There's nothing going on in his throat. So again, 20 minutes is a recommended, but again, that's, that's a recommended, but you gotta play, monitor your animal and see what he's doing and experiencing. If it's not enjoying it, and it's getting absolutely stressed out of his head, you have gotta take some action. Because the only thing you don't wanna do is you wanna give it extra stress, it's gonna cause even more issues. So you have gotta do this really carefully. It's one that you have gotta monitor, I think, in every case. If you need advice on anything, so it says here, um, Try googling some of these terms. In my experience, R RI is not as contagious as people think. It spreads through your collection if they all suffer the same poor parameters, but does not affect healthy snakes. If you need advice on antibiotics and dosages, I can prescribe, but use the less invasive methods first. And as always, check your parameters and double check again. So there's a double checking, good advice. Poor ventilation, chill and extremities of humidity, too high or too low, it's not good. Okay. In the UK, usually a winter thing, in the, in the UK it's usually a winter thing, too cold and or humidity is too low. And I hope that helps, and it certainly does, so thank you for that message. Now, um, it's interesting, isn't it? So we've got to take a a very really careful approach to this and everyone's going to have a different approach just as there's a different approach to breeding there's going to be a different approach to how we how we help our snakes with their medical but the, the more knowledge we have we're empowered to do the right thing so this week i'm great i'm really grateful for those that asked the question because i don't know a lot about this so i'm going to be learning alongside everyone else and i'm hoping that if we get it right if we get any issues we can deal with it very quickly because then speed is the name of the game here and what i've also learned is that you've got to and be prepared to open their mouths because your snakes and my snakes could have RRA issues we don't even know about. And a lot of us are a bit frightened to open up their mouths because it does stress them out. And to be honest with you, I've, I've, I've never opened up a, a, a snake's mouth, Jared. Mm. So what I've decided to do is I've decided to um, show a few video clips of people that have and how to do it. And you can take what you like from it. And I recommend some other people that have been willing to be transparent with their collections. But first, I think we need to get the snake's anatomy first. Let's have a look at that. So we're going to um, off to Bull Python University. I hope you're um, happy for me to share this with you guys. So we'll leave the lights on, Jared, because I found out it works with the lights off. I'm sure. People want to see my dazzling good looks, of course. Um, by the way, when um, 
I've got to crack a joke, otherwise people will think we're going to be a bit dry. Um, when um, we get a recommendation about breeding to leave poo and everything in there, obviously the only way, putting poo in there obviously has its reasons for snakes, but if anyone has a, an issue with um, their own personal love, love life, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, what I recommend is a nice clean shave. No, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> right, Sorry. let's move on. <laughs> Sorry, Jan. I, I recommend probably... better banter. <laughs> Jan, I've just, I've just, I've just realised that I've probably offended anyone with a beard out there, and any woman that likes a man with a rugged. Some, I guess, some women like it rougher than others. But, um, yeah, we'll leave that there. Anyway, I think you're probably having a good laugh at my cost anyway, or or Jared's. <laughs> Sorry, Jared. No, no cost to me. No. Okay. Okay. Right. What we're looking at here. So let me just see where we're going here. So. Ah, there we go. So we're looking for a picture of a snake's anatomy here, aren't we? That's what I'm looking for. So let me just see where we go. So I want to be able to um, get an anatomy. There we go. There's a diagram for us. How's that, Joe? So if we look at the anatomy of a snake, you'll see that um, the trachea, which is often known as the track, I believe. Is that right, Jared? You done any biology? Nope. I'm guessing. Let me know if I get, if I get this wrong, guys. Correct me. The track here, which is through here, I believe. This is the tube of what the snake is. Obviously, uh, the respiration issues are going to be in that tract. That's why they call it respiratory tract infection, I believe. Is that fair enough? Mm -hmm. Can you see how that leads all the way down to the heart? but also feeds into the lungs. Now, what surprised me about the anatomy of the snake is it has a right lung here. It's very long and thin, isn't it, Jared? Yeah. Compared to ours. But also below there, it has a second lung somewhere. I can't see it. There's a left-hand lung somewhere. Can you see it? No. Oh, maybe my research was incorrect. I thought, that, I thought there was a left hand. Why would they call it right without a left? I suppose it's because this is a cross-sectional picture. You're only seeing the right side. So probably, but I might be wrong. I read somewhere that the other lung was further down and doesn't actually get used for breathing. It has another purpose. But anyway, let's just focus on the right lung, which is the main lung, I think, that actually helps it breathe. Look how long and thin that is. So if you get an infection coming into this, we've got two lungs and we are very good at dispelling infection because, you know, we're upright people and we can, we can cough, it out. cough it out, sneeze it out, Whereas a snake is on its belly all the time, and therefore the slime's going to stay in the lung. And I think that's what the thing that makes, if you don't treat them, it gets worse. I think they drown in their own fluids, in their own slime. It must be the most painful, slow death. Therefore, I would always say treat early, because otherwise we're going to have an issue and the snake's going to get progressively worse. It needs. And I think that's the reason why people say that if a snake has an RRA issue, there are various symptoms, and one of them is it stretches its neck to try and discharge this phlegm. And you get bubbling at the mouth, and you get all these other things, which leads me on to another one here. So I think, let's have a look and see if I can find something else for us that might be helpful. Um, I can find it. Here we go. So, it's not picking up, Jan. Why isn't that picking up? I'm not sure. I might have to close that. Right. Is that picking up now? No. Okay. Can you help me get the thing working? Here we go. <laughs> Jared basically, in the building side, when we're doing the building, if it doesn't quite go, you just bang the wall and everything goes into place. <laughs> Jared just banged my iPad, it's working now. So let's look at the symptoms. So these are the symptoms. Bubbly, stringy saliva. Loss of appetite. Uh, lethargy. Lethargy, lethargy, yeah. Which is being, lethargy. lethargy, I think it's called, which is being lethargic. Yeah. yeah. Rattling, clicking, whistling noise when breathing. So if your animal has any of these symptoms, you definitely have an RI issue. Now, the cause of the problem, according to this lady here, is cool temperatures, incorrect humidity, and poor hygiene. And I would also go to say that some are infectious as well. Airborne. So, even if you've got the right conditions, if you are not doing your husbandry correctly or you're not preventing things coming into your collection, if you're not isolating an animal, and the first thing is to isolate an animal, don't let it spread. So I think you could have all those things right. You could have your humidity on, on point. You could have 
you could have your temperatures all spot on and you could be immaculate with your hygiene but if you've got one snake in your collection that is hiding a virus or hiding a bacteria and you're not doing if you're not changing and washing your hands and you pick up a snake with it and you pass it on to a weaker snake with a much lower immune system it will manifest itself in the other snake it can be spread also cleaning your tools because you can spread it using your tools and please 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 uh, being clinical with your cleaning and hygiene I think is absolutely essential to keep this under, under wraps and keep it under control so that I think is quite helpful treatment now let's see what she's saying on treatment I'm not sure whether this is going to be very comprehensive but if you suspect that you have a ball python respiration infection on your hands make sure that the enclosure is warm enough and has the high has the right humidity levels then make an appointment with a certified reptile vet who will likely prescribe antibiotics and uh, I would say that she's probably that's a good general answer but it's not a detailed answer and it isn't necessarily the right answer in my book because I think you've got to do much more research don't rely on something like this remember what I said be well read the more well read we are the more opinions we get and the more ideas we get you'll see a correlation of good ideas hopefully hitting you know hitting us and so I think I never take the first opinion ever I'm one of these people I like to get lots of different views and opinions and I never accept everyone's opinion as gospel I've got to make my own judgment and we need to we all need to make our own judgment here right now I'm going to show you a video of this is one of the, my favorite videos on respiration and it's actually one of my favorite channels that I've subscribed to and I think a lot of you out there love this girl and let me just get her details because I've got here um, Emily from Snake Discovery has done a wonderful video which I'm going to share and Emily I hope you don't mind us sharing your video because it's for the betterment of the community um, but I'm going to share a clip of it and it's on Snake Discovery channel which I'd highly recommend having a look at and I'll see if I can find it See if that will come up, Jack. The bear it all fall hammer. You want him plain and simple. Everyone wants him, and here's why. The fire knife ha- Alright, here we go. Hey everyone, this is Emily with Snake Discovery. When you're holding your pet snake, you're probably doing a visual inspection of it all the time, especially when you initially take it out of the enclosure. You're looking at its scale conditions to make sure there's no stuck shed. You're looking at its eyes to make sure there's no stuck eye caps. You're just doing an overall visual check on your snake. But one thing that people typically don't look at is inside the snake's mouth. By doing regular checks on the inside of your snake's mouth, if they let you do it anyway, you can catch early signs of upper respiratory infections. Now you might be thinking to yourself, if your snake's temperature and humidity requirements are met, there's no chance of your snake getting an upper respiratory infection, right? Well, say you're at a friend's house and they have snakes and they do not realize that one of their snakes is showing early symptoms of an upper respiratory infection. You hold their pet snake and then you go home and you hold your pet snake. You transfer it right then and there. It's a very contagious illness and it spreads rather quickly, especially through large collections. So by doing regular checks on your snake's mouth and its breathing, you can easily identify the earliest symptoms of an upper respiratory infection. The two main symptoms of a URI would be raspy breathing, which is pretty obvious. You just hold the snake up to your ear and you can hear their breathing, whether it's clear or if it's raspy. The second sign of a URI would be excess saliva inside of the mouth. And so in order to check the inside of the mouth of your snake, it's as easy as taking a credit card, or in my case, a MySA rewards card, and let's pretend this is the head of the snake. You'll take that card and you will slide it along the direction that the teeth grow, of course. So this is why it does not hurt them. Slide it into the snake's mouth. You twist it a little bit and the snake's mouth will open because they're like, yuck, I don't like this. And then you can quickly check inside of their mouth, slide the card out, and you'll know uh, the condition of your snake's mouth and whether you see no saliva at all or if you see spit bubbles or excess saliva, which would be a sign of a URI. We're going to take two bull snakes of mine as examples, one of which is a healthy bull snake that had no URI in it, so you can see what a healthy mouth should look like. And the other one is a bull snake that had a very slight URI, but I caught it soon enough and he's already been treated. I don't know exactly why he got it, but regardless, he's already treated and he's fine, I promise. Let's start with a healthy bull snake's mouth. This is Janet. He is a very docile snake, so he does not put up much of a fight. He, I could do anything to the snake. He really doesn't care. We're going to slide the card into his mouth. He opens up. 
and I don't see any excess saliva. I actually don't see any saliva at all. Next, this is Mr. Wilson. He is a hypoalbino bull snake, which is why he looks a little bit different. And if we open up his mouth, he is not as friendly as Janet, so it took a little bit more effort to get this. But we're going to open up his mouth, and you can see near the back of his mouth, there is some extra saliva. Sorry, I was just going to get that back and show you. But we're going to open up his mouth. There we go. This is what I wanted to show you, Jared. Can you see the excess saliva in there? Yeah. That's the bit I think. That's what I'm saying is prevention's better. If you get the... I'm going to try this. I'm going to try a card and actually do an internal inspection because most of us want to actually see the external issue if it arises. But I think back to prevention. I mean, your snakes could be carrying an IO issue you don't even know about because you haven't opened up their mouths. So I think it's a good thing to do, actually, if you can. Obviously, you're going to stress the snake out a little bit, so you'll be careful. I think that's actually... I really appreciate her transparency. I've never seen anyone so transparent as Emily, actually, on the RI issue. That's why I'm showing you this. Let's just finish last bit, and then I'm going to make a small recommendation. How are we doing for time, Jared? We've got 10 minutes. We've got 10 minutes. That's good. And you can yeah. see near the back of his mouth, there is some extra saliva. You really shouldn't see any at all. And that's why he doesn't have a lot of saliva there, but it's enough for me to want to treat him just to be safe. If your snake is showing very minor signs of a URI, just like Mr. Wilson was, you can usually take care of it with increased temperatures and humidity. Uh, just a couple degrees on the temp and just a little bit for the humidity, but I've seen this clear up very um, low-key upper respiratory infections in about a week and no other treatment was needed. But to play it safe, I always recommend, if you are seeing any signs or hearing any wheezing signs from your snake, to bring it to a vet where they can prescribe you some antibiotics to clear that up. Once your snake is better, you need to determine whether it caught that upper respiratory infection as a result of something being wrong in its environment, or maybe if the environment is perfectly fine, then maybe it caught it elsewhere. Sometimes it's just hard to tell where they got it from exactly. Sometimes a snake may not be showing any wheezing symptoms at all, but they will have that ex excess saliva. So that's why I recommend once every three weeks or so doing a visual inspection on your snake's mouth just to make sure that you stay on top of things. I've seen snakes with serious upper respiratory infections still bounce back after treatment. So if you notice anything off with your snake and it might look like a URI or upper respiratory infection, Bring it to the vet. Don't think that that snake is a goner necessarily because chances are it'll bounce back too with the proper treatment. Anyway, I hope that your snake never gets an upper respiratory infection, but if it does, now you know what to look for. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Emily. I found that very helpful. Most of you have probably seen that, but it's, it's good homework to have a look at it again. It's not completely 100% accurate, I don't think, but it's really quite, quite good. Um, but let's just finish up, Jared, because I wanted to. I promised everyone I'd give you some feedback on the questions and answers sessions that we had over the last couple of days, and I wanted to share um, some other things. But just to let you know that we will be bringing out tomorrow the um, fogger, or the what do we call it, the nebulizer, or the nebulizer, yeah. nebulizer fogger. So many different terms for it. We'll bring that out, show you how to set it up, and do a setup. So you might want to make your own. I would suggest that all of us should have one standing by, even if we don't have an RI issue is to get one or make one so that you can actually deal with it straight away if you know what I'm saying um, so that's good and the other thing we're going to cover is um, there's some videos on how to obviously take vet, take vet advice um, how to administer antibiotics to your snakes safely and I think it's worth going through that so perhaps tomorrow we might do the nebulizer and the following day we might do the antibiotics we'll see we might be able to do both tomorrow we'll just see but thank you for being patient with us um, the other videos, can I give you guys some homework, if you haven't already done so? Um, these are the other homework I'm going to ask you to do. Brian Cusco at Triple B has got a video out which talks about the anatomy of a snake. And I want you to go and have a look at that. He's excellent. I watched that the other day and I thought, brilliant. Um, but it's called The Anatomy of a Snake. If you want to see his take on the anatomy of the snake, because understanding anatomy is very important. Let's not underestimate that. The second thing is... Um, there are some wonderful websites on the anatomy of the snake. It's worth going into um, various websites. And I'll see if I can dig out some websites that will give us some really good stuff on the anatomy. So invest some time in research is what I'm saying. Knowledge is power. An application of knowledge is wisdom. And wisdom, rightly applied, brings about blessings. And that's what we want. Blessings for our snakes and blessings for us. 
Snake Discovery, I think, is wonderful. We've mentioned that, and thank you to Emily. Chris Reptiles has done quite a good one, where he does both. He does the RI, uh, talks about RI, and talks about the two different types of RI, which is the bacterial side and the viral side. He also sets up his fogger and buys a fogger. So before you see our fogger video, we'll go and watch his if you like. I'm just giving you guys some help because it'll take us a while to get this content out. So go and have a look at what other people are doing. And uh, the last one, which I love her channel, her name is Jo Sir's Jungle. She's from Europe somewhere. If She has a great love for her snakes to the point where when they got RI, she was devastated. She's very transparent. And that was the very first, when I did my research, that was the very first film that came up. And I was, my heart was breaking, broken almost when I saw what was going on and how she tried so hard. And she tries on her own, unfortunately, to uh, administer antibiotics to her snakes. She would be probably advised to have a second person helping. It's a two person job to make it, I think, more comfortable for the snake and for us. So if you're gonna go the antibiotic route, please, please, if you can, try to get hold of someone else to help you because a snake that's wriggling and needles flying everywhere is not a good good thing. And you would agree with that, Jad, wouldn't you? Yeah, best idea is get the vet to do it. But yeah the vet will do it like say we had that one snake that we bought in from someone that had a problem so both jad and i and mandy as well have both um been nursing a snake and so we've actually had a bit of experience on giving antibiotics and we're going to share our experience with you on that um but yeah there the, that's the videos so joe's jungles videos called my snake is sick you know my snake is sick so google that one have a look but like i say i cannot underestimate the importance of having a qualified vet please take veterinary advice these videos are there just to kind of give us a wider breadth of experience. It isn't necessarily the right thing to do. And I, I, I put that in there, very important. So this morning, I was, you know, the Monday morning feeling, Jared, you know, you've had a lovely weekend, you're back in work and everyone, I always find it quite hard to get motivated on Mondays, do you? Yeah. Because you've had a lovely bit of family time, you've got business and stuff to get back to. And uh, my day was brightened up by Gavin. And Gavin, thank you so much. You put a great big smile on my face this morning, got me in a really good mood. And the reason why is because Gavin's got a very green background and I'm a green person because my surname is Green Acre and I should be as green as possible. And Jared and I are regretting that we never put in under underfloor heating in this facility. And when we do the build facility, the build, um, when we do the build video, um, Gavin's given me such a great idea. He said that you can actually, because I think he actually is in the business himself. He actually sells these, Jared or he's involved with it somehow. But he said that you can actually install a underfloor heat pump in your facility and you can use your natural resources so its carbon footprint is zero, which I love. And Jad and I regret not doing it and we wish you did now. So we're gonna bring that into our How to Build series. So thank you, Gavin. You've brightened up my day in more ways than one and you brought a smile to my morning. Now. As soon as that happened, I got, I was so happy and vibrant, I got a phone call from one of my clients and unfortunately I've had my first loss. One of my clients is in a nursing home and she passed last week and her son called me up and when you know someone for 30 years, and this is not a family member, this is a client relationship, but like I say, all my relationships are friendship relationships anyway. I was so devastated for him, his son, can't organise a funeral, I can't go to the funeral. The only thing I can do is help them with the probate and make sure any financial stresses and worries are off their plate. But I'll certainly be recommending another professional because I'm not registered to do probates, but I will be guiding them or helping them with their probate in a supportive manner. Anyway, that was a sad bit of news. Um, the last thing I wanted to say, because we've only got about a minute to go, Jad, is Kevin um, uses extra paper in his hides as well. So thank you, Kevin. And he's had success with the extra paper approach. Um, and some people have come up with some ideas for the collab with Richard. Now, I don't know how much time we've got, Jared. A minute. A minute. I've got a minute to go through them really quickly. So, Stephen Beckett, is it Beckett? Or Bre Beckett. Beckett. He wants me to be Frodo and Richard to be Gandalf. And he said, I said to him, I need a golem. So if anyone wants to volunteer to be my golem, golem, I need a golem. But we're going to use Shadow as our star, which is our little super cine, because we need a gold ring. So I was thinking we could use Shadow for the... For, the, for that, Chad. What's your thoughts on using Shadow in the film? It's all your ideas. I'm, I'm leaving some to you. <laughs> and the other thing, Hamlin wants me to do a rock-off battle, Metallic, Thin Lizzy. And I said to him, Rich could be Thin Lizzy and I'll be Fat Fizzy because I drink lots of fizzy drinks. I'm fat. <laughs> so, 
but I might bring Jack in. I'll bring Jack in for that one. Um, but we do need to know um, who your favourite rock stars are, favourite rock music. So, bye bye. We'll see you tomorrow.